Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Martina Lyons, and I'm from the IRENA Innovation and Technology Center in Bonn, Germany. Hopefully, most of you know who IRENA is, but just in case not, we are an intergovernmental organization with 160 member countries. We support our members in their transition to a sustainable energy future, and we serve as the principal platform for international cooperation, a center of excellence, and a repository for policy, of policy, technology, resource, and financial knowledge on renewable energy. Our analytical work and our engagement uh, with our members generates a lot of valuable insights, and we are constantly looking for different ways to share those insights with all of you. That is why we launched this as a pilot, a new fortnightly IRENA Insights webinar program. When every other week, uh, presenters from one of IRENA's team, either alone or together with their invited guests, We'll share with you key findings from their latest work. We'll offer you insights into opportunities, trends, best practices, but also innovative solutions to, to address various challenges. We aim to keep these webinars short, approximately 30 minutes, so we cannot cover everything. But we do hope to give you enough to decide whether to delve deeper and we signpost further sources of more in-depth information to help you to do that. So today's webinar, grip stability, uh, grid stability with high shares of renewables and transforming small islands power systems, will explore the importance of assessing the integration of high shares of variable renewables into the grid, particularly for small islands developing states such as Fiji, Vanuatu, or Dominican Republic. We will share with you some best practices on how to mitigate technical challenges while considering system specificities. And we will also offer insights into valuable resources and to ensure secure and reliable power systems. I'm excited to present you our speaker today, Ms. Gayatri Nair. She's our expert from the grid integration team. Her presentation will be circa 20 minutes long and will allow a short 10 minute session for Q and A's. But before I hand over the microphone to Gayatri, I have a few house housekeeping items to cover. So as always, webinars will be recorded and available together with the presentation slides on IRENA website. And the link will be shared with you also in the follow-up email. All of you are currently muted and will remain so throughout the webinar. Also, we would love to hear from you during uh, today's presentation. So if you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the question feature that you can find on the webinar panel. We will be monitoring the questions throughout the session and select some to be answered by our speaker. But due to time constraints, we apologize in advance if your question is not answered. You may also download the reports on which this presentation is based on in the hands out, hand out section on the panel. And if you experience any technical difficulties, please try to reconnect by dialing in via phone. You can get the number by clicking on the phone option located on the webinar panel. And if your technical difficulties remain unresolved, you may write to us through the chat section and we'll try to help you out. So without any further ado, let me kick things off by welcoming Gayatri. Gayatri, over to you now. Thank you, Martina. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, as uh, Martina has already mentioned, the grid integration team at IRENA supports member states by conducting grid assessment studies and capacity building towards the integration of renewables, uh, considering the complexity and size of the power systems and planning and operation of the grid with different power generation technologies. We also assist member countries in answering key questions such as what are the technical constraints towards a continued secure and stable operation of the power system, what enablers are needed for integration such as storage, grid uh, reinforcements and other solutions, how to estimate the hosting capacity of the system, which is the share of renewables that the system can currently accommodate. And also, uh, we help them assess what are the resources that can be accommodated in the system and how the power system can look to achieve 100% renewables and how they can develop pathways to the same. 
Additionally, we also conduct capacity building workshops for different regions and offer platform to share best practices on power system modeling and simulation studies and grid operation and management with high shares of renewables. In, in this slide, you can see the list of members uh, we have conducted grid studies for and we will be sharing information on some of the most recent work from the team in the last few slides of the webinar. Uh, moving on to the next slide. In this slide, I intend to talk about the publication that we brought out in the last year. Other IRENA studies reveal that electrification with renewables is a key enabling solution to energy transition and energy access. The basic objective of a power system is to provide power at certain levels of reliability and power quality. Almost, um, mo almost all island power systems are based on conventional or fossil fuel uh, generation, such as diesel, but some are blessed with hydropower, so they use that. This causes a high dependency on fossil fuels and their price volatility, and they have reliability issues as well. But with using DRE resources, they can look into utilizing lo local resources for power generation and also reducing their CO2 emissions. To ease the pathway for small island developing states in achieving their targets for increased share of renewables in the power system, Irina brought out a publication that is uh, the Transforming Small Island Power System Technical Planning Studies for the Integration of Variable Renewables in 2019. This document gives a comprehensive view into the various aspects of variable renewable power, specifically from the island grid perspective. It is basically a guideline for the technical studies needed to plan the expansion and operation of island power systems with high shares of BRA. The content of the document is applicable to a large variety of SIDS ranging from very small islands with uh, only a few distribution feeders to large islands with more complex transmission networks. The highlights of the publication, publication as shown on the slide addresses the expected challenges in integrating VRE, the VRE integration planning required, the technical studies needed to assess the system and its constraints, and the solutions required to overcome the challenges. Some of the other overarching questions that the document addresses are how utilities can determine the level of VRE that could be accommodated in the power system while complying with all operational limits and reliability requirements, uh, how we can determine the main technical issues which needs investigation depending on power system characteristics and find mitigation strategies which would work to resolve the identified technical issues. You can also download the document from the link given. We will see more discussion on each of these points in the upcoming slides. With most island nations anticipating power sector transformation, it is key to understand the strategic planning process. Planning is normally based on institutional policy targets and developing renewable roadmaps. Roadmaps help to decide the target VRE share, and feasibility of a transformation is assured through technical, institutional, and financial aspects. Technical planning studies therefore impart important recommendations on the technical aspects and reconfirm the feasibility of the expansion plan. It helps address questions such as what new generation are to be incorporated, the geographical location of these generation in the network, the operational practices of the power utilities and how to modify them, and the market structure design and regulatory framework. Depending on the share of VRE to be incorporated, the feasibility of the transformation required can be assessed. Low to medium penetration of VRE can be quantified as 10 to 30 percent, whereas high penetration can be considered to extend from around 40 to 100 percent. When the level of VRE share stays between 10 to 15 percent of the instantaneous load, no significant integration issues are expected. But this does not mean that they can be incorporated without any technical assessment of the system. Uh, and for higher levels of penetration, additional studies need to be carried out. So depending on how the VRE share targets are set and based on the recommendations from the technical studies, the implementation phase can begin. Now we need to understand why we need grid, grid assessment and why is it so important in the case of small island developing states. In this slide, we will uh, discuss the need for uh, what grid assessment or technical studies reveal and what issues do they address. Island power systems have specific challenges, system specific challenges, and they may not be so evident in other larger systems. 
system specific challenges are include uh, limited resource base which is uh, which deprives them from the benefits of economies of scale they have smaller domestic markets and depend heavily on a few external and remote markets they in the high cost for energy infrastructure transportation communication and other servicing facilities they are at long distances from export markets and import resources they have a smaller size of system which makes them prone to stability and resilience issues uh, we, they have little resilience to natural disasters and a growing population which face uncertainty in demand growth and more importantly they have a very fragile natural environment to protect in addition to the above the characteristics of vre also creates issues in integration and they may be broadly summarized as being non-synchronous or inverter based so their contribution to system operation is limited which also affects the frequency and voltage regulation and the ability to contribute to stability of the power system they have location constraints which are uh, being distributed in location so which again uh, means that they may be away from load or demand centers and requires more transmission or line capacity they are uncertain uh, or have limited predict predictability which impacts the commitment from other generating sources their variability makes them non-dispatchable requiring other flexible resources to compensate for their lack of or excess it may be prudent to say here that all of the above problems have solutions and it is up to us to tackle it at the right time with the right solutions in order to find the right solution it is required to model and study the power system and its performance under critical conditions now we can move on to the different technical studies which are required uh, we will see the different studies in this slide according to time frames uh, mainly from an expansion planning point of view and an operational planning point of view so technical studies are conducted using well-defined methodologies and can be repeated as a continual process from an expansion planning point of view uh, and to determine the future expansion investment required system level studies must be carried out starting with load generation balance they include generation adequacy, sizing of operating reserves, and generation scheduling studies. The above studies aim at achieving sufficient generation capacity to supply the load and limit load shedding. Also, they assess the flexibility of the system in the presence of VRE. These are usually done using reliability matrices and unit commitment and economic dispatch software tools. They also ensure that an adequate generation capacity and operating reserve is kept available in the system to reduce risk to acceptable levels. From an operational planning or short-term perspective, we need additional studies to ensure that the stability of the system is maintained and that defense plans are put in place to prevent a system collapse. Some of the studies to be conducted in the operational time frame are load flows, which determines the voltage and power flows in the system at normal operation, short circuit assessment to evaluate the system after short circuit fault and static, uh, static security assessment which is the evaluation of the power system after the occurrence of a disturbance system stability is also a major uh, challenge in power system operation and it pertains to the ability of the system to regain stable operation condition after an event stability studies include assessing the transient voltage and frequency stability limits to assess that the system will not collapse after an event. Additionally, a defense plan study is also needed to identify critical situations and to set up rules and operating procedures to manage the system before it goes into a blackout. Recommendations from uh, them include protection and special protection schemes such as under frequency load shedding, generation redispatch, and so on. Uh, some some uh, some of the uh, regulators also uh, mentioned that grid connection studies such as grid impact and grid code compliance studies to assess the compliance of new generation with the power system are also required. For each of the technical study highlighted here and covered in the guide, the following main aspects are addressed. Purpose and relevance of the study, time horizon at which the study should be conducted, and the time frame of the physical phenomena represented, required input data relevant operational conditions to be represented and criteria for analysis uh, workflow and methodology to perform the study examples of software tools available to perform each study and study cases 
methods for assessing how a given technical solution or mitigation strategy can increase the potential penetration of VR. In the next slide, we will see what are the possible solutions and recommendations that can be obtained from these studies. Recommendations and uh, solutions uh, for the integration of BRE can be from both uh, infrastructure perspective and operational perspective. And uh, from an infrastructure investment perspective, we can consider diversification of BRE installations, that is mixing solar with wind or hydro or spatial diversification by spreading the location of uh, power plants into a larger geographical area. Flexible generating units to address operational challenges uh, that is in adding, adding them to the system or replacing old thermal generation with the modern ones. Energy storage systems, which can be used to store excess generation and respond in the different time frames for inertial support and reserves. Uh, grid reinforcement, that is reinforcing the existing portion of the grid to connect new generation and new enablers and protection equipments. Uh, distribution automation, it allows um, Controlled, um, sorry, increased controllability and observability of the grid and includes automatic fault location and restoration. Smart grid technologies using smart grid solutions like dynamic line rating, flexible AC transmission solutions, etc., to overcome challenges from BRE and interconnection with neighboring systems. This may not be a very island specific solution, but it also allows pooling of generation capacities and sharing operational reserves and mitigating challenges such as variability. Some of the operational measures that are considered are uh, demand response programs where system operators can influence electricity consumption of grid users using smart meters and dynamic tariffs, adaptive generation dispatch and control, which are relatively low cost measures and are easier to implement and involve adapting the setting of governors and downward reserves, uh, adaptive defense plans, that is uh, by reviewing the current different defense plans and upgrading them, automatic power controllers and network monitoring, which is a very necessary measure for all power systems undergoing transition, which helps them to control and manage all the devices connected with the system, and accurate VRE forecasting, because uh, by using advanced forecasting methodologies, such as artificial intelligence-based forecasting, we can mitigate operational uncertainty. In the next few slides, we will see how these studies and recommendations have provided a pathway to increase the shares of VRE in different power systems. The renewable, the renewable energy grid hosting capacity analysis for the island of Bithilevu, Fiji, was finalized by IRENA in 2019. It aimed to assist the country deploy solar PV and achieve their MDC targets and estimate the level level of solar PV generation that can be incorporated into the power system. The power network was modeled in PSSC and converted to Dix Island Power Factory simulation software. Uh, the studies included feeder level and system level studies, such as power flow, short circuit, and contingency analysis. And under different scenarios of high PV, low demand, high PV, high demand scenarios. Uh, they were conducted on representative feeders of four zones, such as um, industrial, commercial, and residential uh, feeders. The outcome of the study was that Bithilabu can consider 40 megawatt of rooftop distributed PV and 25 megawatt of utility scale PV as the conservative upper bound for first stage deployment of PV in Bithilabu. This, uh, follows, uh, this follows slight modifications in the voltage and frequency regulation constraints. And some of the recommendations from the study included upgrading voltage compensation uh, and voltage regulation methods, implementing faults right through considering curtailment of utility PV in critical scenarios and um, corrective, adapting to corrective measures. The grid assessment study for the Luganville grid in the island of Espirito Santo was undertaken to aid the government of Anuadu expand the share of renewables up to 100%. The power system of, two, uh, of uh, 2016 was predominantly diesel generation and um, the study mainly assessed the possibility of increasing the shares of renewables uh, such as hydropower and solar power. Um, the technical studies conducted include frequency, voltage, and transient stability analysis, including contingency analysis. The outcome of the study showed that the island can achieve almost 98% of renewable penetration when considering biofuels. 
that but the least cost and the best renewable option involved uh, 800 plus 300 hydro, uh, kilowatt of hydropower generation combined with 2 megawatt of solar and um, 1 megawatt of battery. Additionally, 0.5 megawatt of diesel EPS and a comprehensive hybrid control system at the current equipment cost was also recommended, which will help achieve 84% renewable energy uh, contribution in 2030. The study provided a pathway to adopt a power generation profile with almost negligible diesel and increased share of hydropower and solar. Some of the recommendations uh, included improved control system and upgrading the network assets, installing um, flow monitoring equipments for hydropower generation, developing a detailed grid code and interconnection requirements for new generators. The IRENA VMAP study in 2016 showed a potential of 1.7 gigawatt of solar PV and 2.3 gigawatt of wind power, achieving around 43% of renewable shares in the power system. Of Dominic, uh, sorry, of Dominican Republic. The total power capacity installed at the end of 2017 uh, reached about 5 gigawatts, with fossil fuels being the primary energy source at 87.77%. The grid assessment study was finalized in 2019 and was done to help the country achieve their renewable targets and it considered several scenarios starting with 17% in 2020 up to 45% in 2030. The unit commitment and economic dispatch over a period of one year were optimized using flexes, while the power system model was created in the Excellent Power Factory software. Uh, the different technical studies conducted were frequency, transient, and voltage stability analysis and contingency analysis. Different contingencies and faults were simulated for the different subscenarios selected for the study and at critical snapshots of the system. Based on the results, the policymakers of Dominican Republic and grid operators were advised to consider practicing under frequency load sharing, installing batteries, reinforcing the grid using corrective operational measures and must run synchronous generation. And in the projected remap 2030 mean demand scenario study, the demand could be met by over 900 megawatts of wind, 600 megawatts of solar, 400 megawatts of coal, 200 megawatts of landfill and over 200 megawatts of hydropower generation. So with this, we come to the end of the uh, webinar. I thank you all for listening in and hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, we will be happy to answer them. Or you can also send your questions to grid.integration at irena.org and we will get back to you. Thank you, Gayatri, for a very insightful presentation with a lot of details, uh, which I feel it's very relevant to, to so many countries. But without losing time, let me go directly to the questions. We've received several of them before the webinar through the registration and then many others now during the webinar. So I will take them one by one and we will see how many we'll manage to answer. And the audience, thank you all for posting them. So let me start with this one. <clears throat> How better forecasting and scheduling can improve grid balance and help TSO, which stands for Transmission System Operators? Thank you, Martina. And it's a very relevant question. Um, I feel better forecasting will help reduce commitment required from other generation capacities and also will help reducing costs and uh, operation, operational costs. Uh, also will uh, allow uh, reduced operation at part load and less cycling of units, other units, I mean. Um, therefore, the requirement for flexible sources and operating reserves will also be there, thereby reduced if a better forecasting is done. So it, it will effectively um, increase better dispatch and uh, less frequent uh, activation of operating reserves. I hope uh, this answers the question. Yeah, me too. And another one, how can data analytics help in overcoming technical constraints of grid integration? Uh, so data analytics, uh, in my opinion, can help analyze the consumer usage pattern and allow a condition-based maintenance uh, possible from data and trends gathered. And they can also help reduce manpower, minimize the impact of human errors, uh, also improve asset life management and utilization of assets. So it will empower smart energy power systems, as this is according to my understanding. 
Uh, there may be additional features also, I mean, additional advantages also from data analytics, but this is what I can briefly say for now. Great. And another question, what is considered as the maximum share of renewable energy generation before creating excess, excessive instability to the power grid, therefore requiring massive interventions? Okay, uh, so this is a very system specific question because each system has its own capability to accommodate a certain share of uh, renewables. Like I mentioned in the presentation, that is what the hosting capacity analysis shows. Uh, so a threshold VRE penetration would definitely differ from one system to another, depending on what assets you have, what is the condition of the system at present, and what um, what kind of measures the grid uh, operators are able to um, do. So additionally, uh, in order to um, assess the amount of VRE that can be incorporated in the system, in addition to the grid assessment studies, one must also look into having a defense plan, which actually provides uh, recommendations and rules for um, managing the critical system conditions, if ever they arise, when VRE is incorporated into the system. And uh, they can also have under frequency load shedding measures or uh, automatic connection or disconnection of uh, reactive power compensation equipment, out of step protection, uh, transformer tapping in uh, instructions. I mean, some of the measures that I suggest are these. Wonderful. And another question. What are the technical constraints of microgrids with the zero, zero inertia and how can grid stability be ensured in uh, such a situation? So I'll just point out one of the major constraints and that is frequency stability. Um, I think that must be uh, that must be one of the major constraints in the major uh, microgrids with zero inertia. And uh, according to me, uh, grid forming inverters and having flexible sources of uh, uh, generation such as storage and part participation from the VRE itself, VRE sources itself, may be used to resolve this issue to provide frequency support. Great. Let's take a couple of more questions. Um, so the next one, is the technical data shared in a public forum? Uh, forum? Are the studies available in the public domain? So we generally uh, don't publish uh, any sensitive data without the permission from the concerned member country. And uh, it's only published online if, uh, if the permission is provided to us. So. I mean, we cannot give sensitive data outside, so we don't publish it usually. That's, that's fair. How long does it take to complete such a project? So it can range anywhere between six months to two years. Uh, of course, the time duration of each project is system specific and depends on the nature of the request. What are the kind of studies involved? Uh, how long does it take for us to get the correct and accurate data? Uh, of the system and uh, we try to keep the time as minimal as, minimal as possible and we also the finalization of the scope and uh, uh, or scope of work and how swift uh, the response from the stakeholders regarding data and system specifications also determines the duration of the project. Okay. Mm, another question. Does the study consider grid expansion plans? Uh, yes, we consider the expansion plans of the power system, which is related to the shares of renewable energy. And uh, if there are any renewable energy targets already finalized, and they are also, uh, we, it, should, it should be made aware that we do the studies for a predefined horizon. So for which the expansion plans may or may not be known, and the projected demand may or may not be known. So it, it is, it is kind of definitely considered in the study. So we require all these information from the member states uh, to plan uh, the horizon of study that we need to do. Okay. Another one, what are the renewable energy technologies considered for the study? Okay, so generally uh, we have been focusing on solar and wind so far, but uh, that's not to say that we haven't considered other technologies. Specifically, uh, there has been a study which I mentioned uh, from uh, the uh, grid study of Manwatu where we considered biofuel. 
So it is definitely not constant, uh, focused only on solar and wind, but also we consider other stat other uh, sources like uh, biofuels, geothermal, and uh, other other any other resources that are available in the country. So maximum utilization of whatever natural resources are provided to us. That is what is uh, used in the study to formulate the expansion plan as well as to understand the system. Okay, let's. We are slightly running out of time, so let's take two more questions. So one is, what are the penetration levels of renewable energy considered for the study? So uh, we we have, like I mentioned earlier, the 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 member country or the power system utility would have already set a certain level of target. So depending on how. Um, the penetration level is seen, whether it is low, medium, or large scale, or uh, stretching to 100% RE. The, uh, we consider them for study, and we assess, we assess first the hosting capacity, and then we go on to understand how each of these targets are going to affect the system, and over a, a time horizon. Say, for example, uh, we consider, uh, in the case of uh, the Dominican Republic, we consider 17% in 2020 up to 45% in 2030. So it is like, it is what is decided by the country or any other studies that have already produced a target share, then uh, we consider that for the study. Okay, I will, I will ask last uh, question. Does the study include also demand response programs? Um, Okay, recommendations from the BID study includes demand side management, such as load shedding and inclusion of measures, such as uh, smart metering and hybrid control systems, which help to implement demand side response measures. And IDENA uh, flex tool can also simulate how demand response would also uh, be used to increase the power system flexibility. So, uh, per se, uh, we suggest it as a recommendation, but at the implementation phase, we would see how the demand side management this or demand side response measures can increase the shares of the app. Thank you, Gayatri. Unfortunately, the time is up. This was a very insightful webinar, and I thank audience for all the pertinent questions, uh, which were hard to choose from. Thank you all. Let me thank Gayatri for her captivating presentation. We do hope that the insights she shared are of a great value to all of you. Before we close, let me share a couple of final announcements. Regarding the unanswered questions, we are investigating best ways how to answer all of your questions. And uh, we will go through them. We will reply to some of you. And also, we will inform you in the follow-up webinars how we are going to, to address that in the future. Also, to be able to reflect on the delivery of our webinar and ways to improve it, we would appreciate your feedback. And we would like to invite you to complete a very short satisfactory survey, which will appear at the end of the webinar on your screen and which will be shared with you also in the follow-up email. We thank you all in advance for your feedbacks. And last but not least, um, we would like to invite you to our next edition of the webinar series that will focus on the planning for the renewable future and how to improve the use and the development of long-term energy scenarios. It will take us usually in two weeks time on Tuesday, 3rd of March, 2020 and 10 a.m. Central European time. You can already register on the ARENA website and the link will be again shared with you in the follow-up email uh, with uh, supporting um, reports. Once again, we thank you all for attending this webinar, for your active participation, for your great questions, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.